At today's video, we're going to try to do a, a little test on our MT-09. We want to lower the forks. They are adjustable and the forks are machined in such a way you can move them up and down. A, uh, an amount that I assume Yamaha has already figured out is uh, the adjustable amount they'd like you to try. I don't know. So we're going to try it. And my friend Bob, he's a former racer, and he suggested trying it. He's already tried it on his Ninja 400, and it's worked to his benefit. He does the same exact kind of riding I do, a lot of twisties, a lot of hard corners, and it's worth a try because we can put it back if we don't like it. Now today I wanted to try something on the MT-09. I'm coming up on 8,000 miles. I've gotten very comfortable with all the riding characteristics, the suspension settings, and all the adjustments. And there's one thing my friend Bob, and Bob will just got a 400 Ninja and he's lowered the forks with great success. He lowered them on his 900 Honda too, I believe. And he, he was ranting and raving. And now since he's an accomplished rider, I always like to try things. See, the trick is to try things that you can undo. If somebody says, cut the back off the frame and see how you like it. Well, that's a problem with that. <laughs> it's not easy to put back, but in the case of lowering the forks, it's something that we can try, and if we don't like it, we take a ride or two. If it doesn't handle exactly the right way, now I'm the, the reason I'm able to do this with confidence is because I've ridden enough bikes, old, new, from every bike era from the last 60 years, and I've got bikes to prove it too. And I can usually tell if I if I like the handling change or I don't like it. Now, to be honest, I have already lowered the forks in the R1 more than one time. I've lowered them 10 millimeters and then went halfway back, and then I thought about it, thought it rode for four or five times. I said, no, nah, let me put it back in a stock setting, and I kind of liked it the best in a stock setting, but I did give it a try. Now, in, in other cases, when you do a thing like lowering the forks, you have to take into account the clearances between the radiator and the fender and everything. So this is the first time I've done this. I know other people have done it and said they, they like the change in handling. The reason is, a a bike with the forks lowered a little bit. Well, let's go in the other direction with a chopper. You have a chopper with the front end way out there, the rake is way out, you almost can't turn it. Well, as you rake the forks in, typically what happens, the bike st steers in quicker and you get to use more of the front tire. Now, I was looking at Bob's Ninja and he's using almost the whole tire. So, I, it's worth a try and Bob, I will try this and I'll certainly report back if I like it or don't like it. But the good news is if I don't like it, what I'll do is go to full amount, and the forks have an amount on there that it's machined exactly perfect for this. And then if I, I'll check the clearance. If I don't like it, I'll go halfway. And this, ooh, then if I don't like that, it's called interpolation in aviation. Then I'll take the half and go half of that, half of that. And it could be that at the end of this, it'll just be back stock. A lot of times you can't outsmart Yamaha or Honda or whoever, but I know a lot of bikes that have been improved. So we have always have the choice of putting it back. That's the key thing with any modification. So let me get the come along out and the stand and get the bike in position and show just how much work is involved in doing this. It's a relatively simple, straightforward job. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this. There's three bolts on each side. And you can see how the forks, are, they are machined so you could lower them. Now, if we, if we, this, machine was smaller this would be impossible to do so they've also given you the same choice down here they've got the same amount machined so I would assume but I haven't done this yet and that's why we share the information on video I would assume I'm going to be able to lower this that amount and again if I don't like it I'll before I put it back all the way I'll go halfway and if it seems like it gets better and better I'll interpolate my way right back to stock now if I like it I'll probably be at the end of the setting and I'll ride that way for a while just to make sure I like it because what will happen is it'll typically turn into a corner a little bit faster and and where the tread is and Bob has told me this and since I know he's he knows what he's doing he used to race more than me in fact and so his tire wear is now out here so on a 400 Ninja these bikes aren't that totally different in geometry this may be a nice improvement and maybe I'll put it back but again I won't know until I try it. So the first thing is to get the bike in position on a stand up on a come along. 
Now the reason I want it up on a stand will just be more stable to work on. Now, I also have my electric come along. I'm going to brace it up on the forks with, and being very careful not to crush any of these cables or things that are in the way. And then what that's going to allow me to do is just raise and lower the motorcycle. Once I loosen all the clamps, I can just with the come along lower the motorcycle and the forks should come up through the tubes. Uh, we're going to find out. I got the radar detector right away just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so now the forks are off the ground, and I want to just get them just touching. There we go, we're just touching. Oh, hold it. Okay, so now by loosening those six bolts, I should be able to let that get to the position I want and retighten all of the bolts. Now, I recently invested in these sockets that have the Allen wrench built in the end. It should make this job, should be a piece of cake. Now, I assume. These bolts have been Loctited, so I'm just going to back them out very, very carefully until I don't need a wrench to do it. I don't need to back them out and take them out of their slot. That one's loose. And some of these I may have to use an alternative wrench for. I don't know. It looks like this wrench will be fine. But buying these tools, and they were at Harbor Freight, and I, what I did, I bought the best set I could find because I knew I'd be using these over and over again. Now, once I get the adjustment I want, when I take these out, when I get the setting, I'm going to take each one out individually and put a drop of Loctite on just to make sure I've got fresh Loctite on these. Now you can see with the bolts loose, every one of these is a little, and they're coming out equal of course, just a little. I'm almost at the point and I want to go up just a little bit. Okay. So basically that's the amount they allow you on the, uh, the machining work on the forks. I think beyond that you'd have to do something that it was a little more invasive. But this, this was a relatively straightforward thing. And by using a come along, and of course they both go up and down equally. But I'm at the end of where that's machined. And so this would be my first setting to try. And looking forward to seeing this. Now again, when you do these kind of things, suspension tuning, I've played with the adjusters infinitely, and if, you know, you're always trading one for the other, one for the other, but in this case, this bike steers very nice. It steers like a Motard. It steers like an RD400. But, but the thing is, I'm always looking to make it better. And if I can put it back at the end of it, then it's the best of all worlds. No, I really wouldn't want to do this kind of a modification until I had quite a few miles on a bike. In this case, we got almost 8,000. I'm not going to make these super tight, just tight enough to hold the forks in place because what's going to happen, I want to then back out the bolts and put a drop of blue, blue Loctite on them, each one. It's just me. I like having things, especially things on the front end of a bike. And I always feel a little bit better about having some, lo some Loctite on there. So the last thing is to get these bolts socked in and the last thing, go around with the good Craftsman torque wrench. I have two torque wrenches, I think the Craftsman one is the best. And when it comes to these kind of things, I oh, I always trust my good old fashioned Craftsman torque wrench. Oh, I actually do have a Harbor Freight one that reads pretty much the same as this, but I still trust this one a little bit more. I don't know why. I've just had it for so long. Uh, all right. Oh, we're gonna lower this and have to do a clearance check. So part one of this test is with being off the stand, and I can look through. Actually, there's good visibility. I can see that we're not even close to the radiator. I'll do this with the forks in every position. Again, I'm sure they give you enough clearance, but I just like to check. Yeah, that looks fine. Now, what I did, and I forgot to put this on the video, I softened up the, all the compression and rebound settings so that we would have the most travel possible. Again, this is one of the things, just like suspension settings, tires, and power band shapes, and you really have to decide what you like because these bikes, modern bikes, are all so adjustable, and boy, that was very easy to do, and if I don't like it, it'll be very easy to undo. So this will give us one more 
adjustable feature that we've explored with the MT-09 to, to try to set it up to exactly how we like it. But I have to be honest, even from the first ride I ever took on this bike, I was captivated. It just, it has such a light feeling, and I've never seen that in any other bike. It just, all I can say, if you're an experienced rider, it feels like an RD. And, and to me, that feeling that you can just go around things and I don't know how to, and I've got bigger, more powerful bikes and heavier bikes and cruising bikes, but this is the bike I always just enjoy more than anything else. Now, I want to thank Bob for sharing the information. Bob, of course, is a, uh, an accomplished rider and he's, he's burning up tires already on his 400. So, Bob, thank you very much. And when we get to go for a ride, maybe I can get to go for a ride with Bob and uh, have some fun in the twisties with this. But where this will be better is on a road like 106. Where I'm going to lose it is above the maximum speed, whatever you decide that is. Uh, it, but I don't do that that much, so it doesn't matter. It's as the jets are flying over. What I really want to have is that bike that's just so nimble and so, and that low end torque, like. I always say it's an RD with three motors, and I'm, I'm sure everybody that has one feels pretty much the same way. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for watching. So if you're new to the channel, we do try to post up something interesting relating to our passion for motorcycling. Almost every day, we try to go on rides, we try to do little projects like we did today. We try to help other people with their uh, technical little things. Whatever we can, we've been involved in motorcycling over 60 years. And believe me, there's things that I've learned from YouTube that have saved me a lot of time, energy, and money. And I thank every one of the people that's taken the time to post up some of these how-to-do things. It's been great, and I really appreciate it. Now, in our case, a lot of stuff that we do is rides, country rides on twisty roads. And we like to share our passion in a lot of ways. We try to... Go on scenic rides, track day memories, historic and modern bikes, things that we enjoy and share it with our friends, the meetups we have, and evil twin projects, another thing that I always love. And we love our MT-09. If I could only tell you how much I love this bike and the good friends we've been able to make over the many years of motorcycling. And hopefully we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>